This is a new episode of We Are 757 The Show. We got the homie twin in the building. How you been? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Seven Cities, like my second home, always promoting with them guys. AAU ties, we had a lot of ties together, so when we link back up, it's like a family feel. I can come here and like going straight to the fridge, you heard? <laughs> you know, your family, you can go straight in the fridge ready to get something to eat. How, um, I know you came up last time. We talked about the um, situation y'all was in with the um, the uh, basketball, but we never really talked about you. Like, how how did you start? Like, how did you start giving back to high school hoops? Like, what was your beginning in it? Um, it was it was probably when I stopped playing. I really thought that the game would really really be good to me just for being around it. You know, like I wasn't. You know, a lot of people come up and um, they talk about the players that have all the accolades, but a lot of those guys did well by having teammates too. So mm -hmm. that made me understand that at least I know what a, being a good teammate was. I knew I could help a kid be a good teammate, you know what I mean? Because that's how I was when I was coming up in the Berkeley, South Norfolk area. I played at Smith. I wasn't a guy that you would look to to get a bucket and stuff like mm -hmm. all the guys you see in, in this era. So it was just more that defensive, tough role and just being a good teammate, kind of coming to practice and working hard. So. Once I knew I had that in me, I could give it to another kid. That's you know, I knew that's one thing I could do. Like, if you can't do anything else, you can grab a piece of you and give it to another person. You know, just like energy finds good energy. True, true. How how's the um the Corona situation affected like your A your AAU situations? It's, <laughs> it came so fast. <laughs> It came Shut so fast. everything down. Man, you heard man, you heard like it would what it would have been. You even heard the NBA talking about it. And then it just stop. Everything just stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up and you're looking forward to some of your, you know, your release. You get away watching the game and being around the game. It's like stop. Like, no more. <laughs> no more nothing. Like we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> and um, and it it kind of took away a lot of a lot of energy for the whole world. You know, mm -hmm. the sports world. You know, people that kind of enjoy sports and people enjoy, you know, seeing who's competing next in any sport. Mm -hmm. But um. You know, to lose that love, that's hard. You know, you got to kind of like, well, I was watching yesterday. They just showing all the old McDonald games. They showing all the old <laughs> conference, uh, USA, ACC, all those championships and stuff. I hope they put John up there. Yeah, I want to see that too. <laughs> Me too. You know, I want to see something. John, come on the show, bro. Right, 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 right. Definitely want to see Bubba, you know what I'm saying? Because like, all those stuff is like, especially like with me and you talking about, this is the seven city, so who's doing well? It was some good guys you could see. You know, you, man, I wanted to see... The progression of like a Xavier Green. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about him before I even started the show. Like I like how he progressed. He was Conference USA Tournament MVP. Yeah. You know, and um, with that size, that's the type of size you see with those guys over like the Sean Livingstons and the Eagle Dollars and stuff in Golden State. That's what the people like, you know. Mm -hmm. So it could have been interesting to add on to whatever you know you you had like in your college playoff system, whether it be like the Big East, the Conference USA Championship. Like, you know, they still could have played some PIT stuff. So I was like, man, that sucked. Like, I'm not to be able to <laughs> do anything, you know, do something, you know, and just keep working, you know, because he's, he's steamrolling right now. Uh, well, you know? his, he got one more year, right? Right, he does got another year. So I, I, I kind of got to correct myself, not saying the PIT, but that's some of those guys I'm thinking those seniors, yeah, yeah. Were, you know. But um, yeah, when they stop like that, man, you got to reevaluate yourself and think like, see, this is what I truly love. This is what I really, you know, been crafted to do, mm -hmm. you know. Just the love of the game of basketball, man. Was you was you focused on the state championship games? Was you gonna yeah. go up there? Yeah, I, I wanted to see some of those things play out, <laughs> especially the rematches. And we had a lot of area teams. Yes, those rematches would have been <laughs> that, man. That'd have been for all the glory. Yeah, <laughs> that'd have been for all the marbles. That that was, all the guts, all that's the what I think right. most. Like you, <laughs> like it was a lot of um kids that was hitting me up, asking me what I going. I was like, I'm gonna go, but you know, you know how they treat me. They treating me on playoff when it's media time. Right. 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 You know, um, they that Princess Anne like was gonna gonna steamroll anyway, but you still just want to see them go all the way to the mountaintop and achieve it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's where the situation around the world is kind of kind of set back. We kind of live for that. You know, we like this this type of area ball. We stick with our area regardless. You know, seven cities is just a competitive nature about it. 
So you yeah. want to see people get get success and stuff like that. Know if you had a good shot to play Green Run again. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. They oh man. They choked in that in that region game to me, man. I was mad. Uh, man, that would uh, that would have been. It's like nobody wanted to take a shot. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get my head around what was happening. You know, I um, thought it was a well fought game, mm -hmm. but, but to see the part, was a great game. yeah, to see the part two of it would have been, oh man, at the VCU, at the, at the Seagull Center, yes, yeah, <laughs> on the big floor. What's the name of so underrated? Uh, the point guard for um, Norview? Oh, oh, Jamal, just yeah. a pedigree man. <laughs> Defense, bro. He yeah. know how to play the game. I love that. I love that kid. Man, that kid's nice. He, he got man. He's got the pedigree to kind of just give you what you want. It's like a will to win. Uh -huh. And he's got these like underrated size hands. Where he can kind of like get his hands on loose balls and stuff. He's got a good craft about him. You know, he got a good. See, he's a guy that. You know, whatever level you put him on, you're going to get something out of him. It's a hard day's worth of work with him, you know. That's a fact. Yeah, he's going to make you work. That's he's going to make you work. And that's what it's area about. We workers. <laughs> we workers. We grinders. You know, this whole this whole movement. The seven cities. Mm. So, um, what is it? The pilot of 757 teams? Yeah. They put out their, uh, what? Their first team, second they team. They did a first team. Time order. Yeah, they did a How first How do you feel about that? <laughs> Cause they got what uh, first team they got Jaden Nets for Coles. How you feel about Jaden Nets? He's a um, beast. He's the best player in the area. Epps is, Epps is pretty much solidified. <laughs> you know, um, I was reading the article when John went like once when Bubba said like because you know me I'm just my fatuation always loving Bubba coming out mm -hmm. loving John Gilchrist, but when John said he got the tools and he got the mentality. And I looked at John and I looked at him, I said, he does. He does, you know. He does, got, he's got all the tools and he's got the mentality. So it's just room to grow, room to grow, room to constantly grow. You know, he's going to be fine. That's a fact. You know, he's going to definitely be fine. You can drop him off, like they say, you can drop him off anyway. He's going he gonna to create something for himself. There's been a lot of rumors saying that he's not <laughs> going to stay. Dude, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think? What, have you been here? Uh, or if you want to discuss that I, for... I can't really comment on it because I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's per hand. You know, i got a lot of love and understanding and, and wisdom with the family. But I really don't get into knowing what's going on. But uh -huh. it's a win-win for me because I, I I can see him dominate the area and really just impose his will and get multiple titles. Or he's going to go out in the big world and, and create another journey for itself. So yeah. I'll be able to watch him blossom. Anyway. I feel like it's a win-win for him. Right, it doesn't really matter. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? If you can play, you can play like they always say. So he'll be fine. You know, it's just more of a concept when you go across the country. You, when you're going across the country, you ha you're having to think for yourself and showcasing yourself across the country. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to understand. So yeah. there's a certain way you got to play. There's a certain way things you got to buy into. You know, if you go to an IMG Academy, you know, all 15 of us are going to buy in and commit and do the Navy SEAL training and working hard. Nobody's going to be above nobody. Yeah. You know, it kind of matures you early. But if you stay and lead your troops, that matures you too. Yeah. You know, so it, it doesn't really matter. He's going to be fine. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. How you feel about Donald <laughs> Hag? He was first team as well. Donald Jr., he's a bucket. He's a shooter. <laughs> well, if I was starting... If I, if I was starting a college team right now, if I was saying who's ready to be an uh, awesome college player right now, I would say Donald Han Jr. Mm -hmm. And my outlook on him is different from, from a lot of people just because he's already, play, he's already playing a style of pace at his school and then he's got another style of play he can play around good players. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I watched him, the way, the way I evaluated him, I saw him in the Blue Ridge game. I saw him bring the ball up, I saw him go away from the ball, mm -hmm. and I saw him actually play hard. He, he never showed me in his face that he didn't want to play hard. So once I saw that as a sophomore, I'm sold on that. You know what I mean? I can stand on that stuff like that when I know who, who you're about, you mm -hmm. know, what, what you're really about. You know what I mean? Because some days you're not going to get 10, 15 points in a row. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to get a stop, then get a bucket, then get a stop, and get a bucket again. So you got to reprogram yourself every time you flip in the court, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that gets me to understand, like, okay, he can play. You know, and he played the Blue Ridge team. Those kids are bigger, faster, and stronger. And I think he finished with like 30. Mm. You know, it was a hard working 30. <laughs> it was a hard working 30, but that's why you step That's why you step on the court. And whatever the golf course, whatever the course, the obstacle is on that court for you that day, that's what you got to do. You know, I saw him. He had to get off the ball. He couldn't. He wasn't trying to dribble all through all these traps. That wasn't his game, so he didn't play that game. He played another, another skill set level game where he got off the ball. He got to his spots. And he was able to create some stuff for himself and his teammates. 
You know, that's what leaders and, and big time players do. <laughs> How you feel about um, Jenkins, the Mitchell kid? He was first team as well. He's got this body. I didn't, I didn't get to see him play this year personally, but uh, see, he he was on that hoop group circuit. Mm -hmm. And I saw him playing in the summer and with his length and with his understanding and knowing how to play hard in, in those situations. It got him a couple looks early. He got some big got him on ESPN screen. when he banged he got, on kids. He got the ESPN <laughs> look. So he's, he's, he's growing. Another guy that we was talking about rankings. Was he ever really high ranked on somebody's list? You know what I mean? To your knowledge, was he ranked on somebody's Jenkins? list? Yeah. No. Was he ever been high on anybody's no. list? But before, I always told... I was like, and Andrew, you know, that she was slam, I was like, yo, you need to go film the two kids at Minchville. Right. Alvin's brothers and Jenkins. <clears throat> right. And, you know, he wasn't too familiar with them. I was like, bro, they from, they live on your side. You got to go film them. Right. And the next day, <laughs> he was on ESPN. Hey. And then the next game, <laughs> Andrew was at that game. I'm like, bro, I told you. See? I was like, bro, I was like. Bro, he could hoop, man. Cause I seen them play Smith last year. Okay. At uh, Virginia Preps Classic. Mm -hmm. And Strudens was giving Oscar Smith do works. <laughs> <laughs> they can go. Mm -hmm. Like the dad, the dad, the dad is 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 been in the NBA, has some success. Mm -hmm. The dad is a grinder, so the kids, and even the, just the kids around the son and everybody around. You know, you can see that their bodies was changing, so they're doing something off off record to make sure that they're all comfortable and making sure they can do what they got to do on the court. Yeah. Like Chauncey Jenkins was coming in, nobody knew about him. He was just a regular kid. I saw him with some length, and I saw him being able to make some plays, and he picked up some offers coming into his senior season. So I kind of had to jump on some people because he did not play in the EYBL. Mm. He did not play on Adidas Gauntlet. Yeah. He didn't play on those circuits. He was a hoop root kid. Mm -hmm. And he was in whatever circuit it was, and he was making a little bit of name for himself, and that confidence carried him over. And look at him now, you know. Yeah, he definitely doing that. Play. Happens all the time. What well, can you imagine if they beat Kingsport in that game? What happens if they beat Kingsport in that playoff game? They have enough. They they, <laughs> they were well equipped. That's why the game was a battle. The, the yeah. game was a bloodbath. The game was an old-fashioned bar fight. That's a tough loss, <laughs> man. That's a the tough game loss. was an old-fashioned bar fight. They had a wild fight out in there, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just saying on the court, just mental toughness, just breaking down and just trying to be able to be the best competitive player you can be. There was some D1s on that floor. Yes, facts. You know, there was some D1 guys on that floor competing at the, at the level that you would want them to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter about the rankings. It doesn't matter about what somebody says who's, who's top this. You got to go out here, you got to show, and you got to prove it. That's a fact. You know, you got to get out there and do what you got to do. You know, when you go home and say, I held my own, I gave I gave it my all to where he knows that I'm here. And I'm the same kind of a player that he is. Mm -hmm. You know, none of that stuff really matters. <laughs> you, once again, none of these guys didn't have rankings. Now Chauncey Jenkins got rankings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just self-make it for yourself. Just find a goal and just reach out there and dig on it, dig on it. Just keep digging until you reach to that, to that, that situation where you say, I got it. You know what I mean? That's a fact. How you feel about um, Jordan Battle on the list? Um, of course he should have made the list, but it just it just felt like he's so underrated to <laughs> colleges. You know what I'm saying? But I do feel that he should have won stuff because he's been having so much success at uh, North Collegiate. Right. I feel like he should have played senior year at public school and then did the same thing and then be like, what y'all want me to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like he could have did it if he went to the right, right, right school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would want to see him wearing some guys mm -hmm. and, 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 that, and, that, and that hype of the public school because, yeah. you know, they'll try to separate you say you're a public school or a private school or whatever. Kid, yeah. And like you said, you would want to see him in that level too mm -hmm. and playing that playoff atmosphere and you know it would be no different, don't you, man? Yeah, that's You already know. Deep yeah. down, like, you know, and that's why I like, I, like you know, coming on these shows and we're just talking realness. Uh -huh. You know, we're just being real. We're not putting any, any favoritisms on who we like or who we don't like. He can actually go... And play in public school and private school and do the same exact thing. That's a fact. You know. But because so, I feel like, you know, he, he'll go, he'll play against like NA, like uh, Norfolk Academy. Right. And the games be packed. Don't get me wrong, they be super packed. But a Norview versus Murray game, that's a different atmosphere, man. It's a completely different, different atmosphere you're playing in. It's got, and a, lot I felt of, like, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of force <laughs> and a lot of, you know, you can just see the lividness in mm -hmm. people on trying to beat you, you know. Yeah. 
those schools want to beat each other. They didn't want to get those rights, you know. Even sometimes when you have those rivalry games in the beach or Chesapeake, mm -hmm. you know, Oscar Smith Indian River is a big time rivalry, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and that's and they can sell out and they want to get at each other and compete and, and get the bragging rights. Especially Indian River got that win over King's Fort, that was big for them. Yeah, see the competitive big nature. Big brothers too, yeah. other brothers. Yeah, they came out and because and, <laughs> and I've been knowing them for so long, man. Uh -huh. You know, these all these guys that's in the 757, they're going to always come with their with their heart over their mm -hmm. size yeah, yeah, and their mentality over their size. Sometimes it can be good for you. Sometimes it can be a, a situation that can hinder you and be in your way. Mm -hmm. So you got to maximize them and, and, and be able to do it at different levels. And that's when people can take chances and invest their money on you and draft on you mm -hmm. and put you in these colleges. You know, kids say they want offers. You know, you got to be able to mentally see what it takes and then condone that behavior when you get there. You know, so that's my gift to try to get the kids. I, I was just telling them, starting off on this whole segment that we're doing today. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why me and you get along with our conversation. We know. <laughs> How you feel about um, uh, Jacob Cooper? Jake. Cool. Yeah. I, I I like Coop. I like Coop. I like Coop. Like well, and, and you know and, how to play the game. Right, right. I, game. I, I like Coop. I like Coop. I think Coop is. Um, I feel like he he never uncomfortable. The way he handled Rock, he never well, uncomfortable. Well, I think Coop has just got that um, an, uh, another level of just being competitive, just as much as anybody with the size factor, you know. He automatically he automatically comes into the game knowing that, okay, if I'm outmatched, I'm just gonna do this and, and my motor's never gonna stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then his IQ of knowing what, what to do when he's driving and, and, and making impactful plays, live ball, off ball, whatever, you know, he does it with a, a responsibility that he knows he needs to do it well. He mm -hmm. does do it well. Yeah. You know, he was doing it last year when he was young, he had some big shots last year. Yeah. Especially you know, that PA game, early uh -huh. game in the last second shot. And, um, so, to to each his own. He can play in the college level. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure. You know, I heard some rumblings that he could play at the college level. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just work hard and, and thank God for the opportunity, which I know he's going to do. You know, he's he's at emotional. We all at an emotional stage right now. You know, me, him, and the whole Green Run family and everybody Facts, else. Man, man. You know, we Facts. are. You know. Um, uh, yeah, that didn't bother me. Man, it's like, now, man, it kind of fold me over right now, like a little bit of air come out of me, man. Uh -huh. You know, so what we going through, look how tough he was, you know, look how tough yeah, we yeah. all have to be, you know. So that's that's my my whole intellect on and how I view Jacob Cooper. You know, he just, he a piece of steel, a little piece of steel. He's going to keep carving you out. He's going to do what he got to do. Mm -hmm. Tough, man, you know, like a little Wolverine almost. Mm. How, what do you and feel those guys will stay tough. I think you know, they will. That family gonna stay tough. We gonna stay strong. We gonna we gonna stay strong. I think how bad to to stop on the, how big was AJ James in that in in the Virginia Beach area? How, what was his impact? He was a special kid. I, I always tell everybody every time. I was like, anytime he asked me for footage or anything, he always was like, "What's up, man? How you doing? I hope you're doing well." <laughs> hey, you mind sending me that dump or whatever, whatever? Could you send me this? But always, he was like, always, how you doing first? It was never like, hey, send that. What's the name? I was like, bro, this dude is the most respectful kid ever. And then after me and his mom, you can see why, you know what I'm saying? Like, they had a great family. That shit is crazy that that happened to their family, man. That, um, that whole, that whole world like, and our, like for a moment our whole all our world just came crashing down mm -hmm. you know it's like especially seeing them at the game uh, it's kind of like being pinned down and losing a little bit of air you know it was hard to eat a couple meals man it was hard man it's tough man for real it's hard to get the stomach to eat some meals for real mm -hmm. that right. feeling you know you get that feeling where you just feel just like you lost all your wind inside like so to um to, to to go through that and lose a little bit of basketball the rest of the way, you know that, that's what you know what we you know what we have to do for each other the seven five seven you know this mm -hmm. is really gonna define us you know this is a major test for us in the seven five seven you know to kind of find ways to let these sports and let this whole outlook 
and the understanding that we have to be thankful that God allow us to do these things. We have to really cherish them and put them together. You know, mm -hmm. we got to really treat, treat these like treasures and gifts. You know, that's what it is. You know, it's not a, a thing to be played with. It's not something that you can just, just like if I knock this water over and spill it over and keep, you know, you can't gamble and do that all the time. You got to keep it compactful and you got to keep it kind of, well, we all should be working hard to kind of unify these sports, mm -hmm. all of us, you know. Me, you, and anybody else that's into it, we got to take passion. And that's why I like you. I like your whole outlook on stuff in the summer, stuff in uh, pro am time for old, for older guys. For some guys, that's done. You you keep the love of the game around. Who who shouldn't do that? Oh, yeah. They doing it in other states. Mm -hmm. You know, I think D.C. and New York and Philly and stuff. They got basketball. If they, if they was able to play right now, there would be something going on there in basketball. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they are playing. I'm sure they're somewhere on the court somewhere. And then they still playing. Well, I don't know. I know New York is more contained. Right. Like they got more stricter rules right now than uh, Virginia right. right now. But yeah, but yeah. If they if they can get in the gym right now, they would. Right. Get in the court. It's a nice day. And my oh, yeah. and my whole my whole yeah my whole situation. We'll probably talk to that later on as we get to talk more on some of these segments. But the states, like you know, what I mean, like you got to be able to be ready to go against people from that state. That's like. The, this area in Virginia, you know, they need to continue to try to get to understand what's competitive enough, you know, because you remember sometimes they were saying some of the Virginia schools couldn't compete in the national uh, high school showcase leagues that you have with uh, Huntington Prep and all of them that be on ESPN. Uh -huh. They wasn't allowing it in our state to let kids compete unless it was just Oak Hill. You know, I think it should be if it's a nice school that can do it. Yeah. It's here, like okay, one of those Norcom teams or something that was good. Yeah, I mean when they played IMG, I remember uh, that. That uh, team um, sport. That yeah, was, uh, even some of the Norcom teams when uh, they had Finney yeah, and yeah, yeah. and all those guys and, and De Carlos and and Jeremy and Travis and all those guys. Some of those teams can compete and then go and play other tournaments out of state if you allow them to. Yeah, you yeah. know some of the state rules have to be less strict. You know we should we should be able to step it up enough not to be a little competitive. We should be able to, but it's, but got, it's got to happen. As, but I feel like the people that's in control of that uh, ain't, you know, that's the tough, ain't that's us, the tough part about ain't, it. Ain't familiar to the game. Don't use social media like we use social media. Don't right. see what's happening like we see it. They right. just, under, they just, I don't know, I guess they more see the money side. That's just like, let's talk about, uh, you wanted to talk about the conferences and all of that. Like the 5A, 6A classes. Hey, do you think that's killing the competition level, or is it helping the kids? Everybody, it's, I feel like it's doing the everybody wins type situation. Because when we played, we had to play Norcom, <laughs> Glass Town, uh, <laughs> Granby. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. had to play uh, Bethel when they had Duke Cruz. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't. And, you no couldn't, way. You couldn't duck. You couldn't duck a situation. You can. You can dictate who the player of the year gonna be. You can dictate who's going to be the first team all conference because you couldn't duck nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some conferences you played twice. So how they doing it now, I think they wanted more Northern Virginia Central, the Central region. They wanted some of the regions out there in the West, some of those regions that was beyond, you know, like in the mountains and some of those small towns that have a chance to compete. That's why they kind of sliced it up in different classifications. And they hurt. They make us all keep playing each other, but we doing it in scramble situations, yeah. you know, <laughs> so it ain't. Like I seen Lakeland, they was playing like a North Carolina team in their in they region. Like it was like weird, like that didn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. But their best competition is when they play against Kings Four. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let, them, they, let's but, let them settle the score with two times a year like they did do. Mm -hmm. And then let's just have a Southeastern District uh, tournament. But I feel, I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you, you see it, but then like, I went to Tallwood. Tall won good this year. They still rebuilding. They won four games this year. Wow. But they go to the you they get to the go to the conference tournament. If they win that conference tournament, they go to the states. So you think a four and whatever team, how many times they lost, should be in a state championship? That's crazy. Like people not even worrying about that. Like the season. They just worrying about making region and then winning their regions. Like that's crazy. That that's too easy. You can, get a, you, you can get away with a little bit. You can get, <laughs> you can get away with a little bit of some bad habits and sneak around, and you might can upset somebody because you say, "Well, yeah. I lost in the regional final, so I got another shot." But if you put the pressure on everything and do these conference tournaments, and maybe make three classifications, four, five, and six. How yeah, about yeah. that? 
and you have like 16 and each one of them that has to play hard. Mm -hmm. The college coaches don't have to travel and scramble around. Yeah, they can yeah. watch you all play if you can keep it classified and, and, and up in one nice cesspool, mm -hmm. you know, one battle arena where all the guys that's got the, the standout ability to play division one, two, or three and let the coaches see it and evaluate it and everybody's job can be easily indicated to the sports. Like I've, I've been to um, the scope, I watched a lot of the games at the scope, like the region tournament. That atmosphere don't compare to Churchland. Being at Churchland, that whole thing is packed. Yeah, Churchland. That yeah. is different. <laughs> like, <Churchland. laughs> that joint is different, man. Like, they not letting the parents and they not letting the managers on the team and because it's so packed in there. Like that that atmosphere was just different, bro. Yeah, it was it was it was it was kinda of roped off. Yeah. And it was exciting and it had a lot of roar and a lot of uproar mm -hmm. and it had a lot of energy in the building. And so a lot of those kids that played end up going to the next level in that you know in those events. You know, that's where a lot of the the soul you know, just the just the blood, sweat and tears about our area was about. Mm -hmm. Churchland and the regionals. The final four and then the states and man, that was big, that was huge, man. Mm. <laughs> that stuff was huge. It was monumental. <laughs> At, who you um I know uh AU probably fucked up who you was ever gonna deal with this year. I know you be jumping around sometimes. Yeah, cause I um cause what I do, I mean this is how I think. Mm -hmm. This is how I think. Um if you um if you see um, LeBron, LeBron was talking about how all the business owners get together and come up and have get different businesses together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, if we're the state of Virginia, let's just have the best talent. Let's have the, you know, let's make sure that whatever organization we're dealing with is ready to promote these kids at a high level and keep these kids on focus and on track. And um, if the relationship goes back and forth, like you know, if you take a person out and wind and down a person, a person wind and downs you right back. You give them the best athlete. And they go to these these high major schools and do well, the coaches come right back. And some of your kids that might not as might not as be as that their stature can be sometimes put in to have success because that coach might call for just because you have a camaraderie with them. Mm -hmm. You might call and help one of your other kids get recruited. But if you the relationships are scrambled around, you don't get that love. You know, that's why I kinda like to just like, you know, make sure that these AAU teams have different pieces in line to get them stuff and get them things and get them situated. Mm -hmm. But mostly I've been starting out just doing a lot with Loaded because that's where all everybody kind of came in together at real young, you know, and it's never been a situation where that I would ever stop even like my private school and when I was doing private school, the the, the AAU programs, they don't they didn't do no feeder system and stuff like the dude was saying after the state championship about mm -hmm. stuff like that. They didn't have to do that. Yeah, they, didn't, they don't do that. It's a program to help all kids. Kids and parents make decisions on where they want to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, don't, they don't force you to do no stuff like that. <laughs> you know, but if you look at the, the, the teams in Sierra Canyon and stuff like that in Cali, they, five of them played together. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Five, they, yeah, look, look at that stuff. Look at the, the LeBron yeah. Jr. and all them. They can play together if they want to because they go to the same school and they're in the same state. You know what I mean? They played together. So what? What is this guy saying that about? If, um, what after the John Marshall situation? That didn't even make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, City coach, right? and he has some of his players playing in the program. He knows how it goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can play. You can play that another shoe pro, shoe company program and did this. But when it comes to everybody on your team being just as good and having that much success, that's why you got to come over there and see how it feels and get that success. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna work hard and get these offers and looks and stuff like that. It's gonna be demanded of you, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I, you know, I'm pretty much doing the majority of my home, my home work, my whole core homework was with loaded though, and it still is, you know. But other programs that's gotten my knowledge, it's always gonna be love because it helps kids. Yeah, you know, yeah. what I mean, other programs and stuff. Look at what Claire and them has done. They were gonna do that anyway because they started their own programs when they first came up and we first meeting each other. Yeah. They were going to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's uh, some more programs that's been in the beach doing it. Yeah. You know, Academy Prep was a, a, a program that's still around. They had your good 7th, 8th grade, and ninth grade kids and groom them. And then when they break off, 
you just try to keep a relationship and see where they go at. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they still got good things like that going on in, in these areas. You That's know? a fact. Yeah, like I know, North, I know. Carolina, North Carolina had this team one time mm -hmm. on the hoop group. They never really played shoe circuit, and it was called Carolina Diamonds. You know, and Bam out of Bayou and them used to be just a group of guys within that range in Carolina. They would just be throwing the lobs at each other, and they was athletic and getting up and down. So eventually, those kids broke up. Some of them are first rounders and lottery picks, and some of them end up being mid majors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so. It, it, it happens everywhere. It's yeah. like, your, you know, some of your Boo Williams B teams had guys that played, you yeah. know, A-10 and stuff like that. <laughs> That's you know, Trey Freeman went to the Detroit Pistons and, 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 and got production coming from a Boo Williams B team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get the right, if you can get the right group of people, and you yeah. can get them to care for each other and buy in, uh -huh. and they genuinely want to win, it's going to happen every time. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you had to, like, if you had to build an AAU team with just seven five seven kids. Who would you who who, who would you have in your team? If I had to build an AAU team. <laughs> yeah. To get that right. I mean I'm not saying what circuit you're gonna be playing in just And it's just all seven five seven. Mm hmm And I have to build an <laughs> AAU team with all seven five seven kids. Yeah. What level would we be playing on? Would we be playing <laughs> on like a well, it would be majority of the all time with the kids, mm -hmm. and it would take me some time to kind of like, you know, see who jail together, ready made the pieces, and you know, before I kind of like mix it up mm -hmm. and kind of like stir it up in the pot to get it going, I got to see, you know, what type of ingredients. But um, some of the kids in our area that made the all time with the team are deserving. Some kids should have got mentioned. I understand that. I do understand that. But you're dealing, you're dealing with a voter or somebody that's picking the situation for you off a lot of information and it's not fully invested in what really you know who really stood out and stuff like that. It should be a lot more input on sports people giving the sport a vote. You know voting and things like that. You know it's crazy. Someone fair, fair someone, share. Someone mm -hmm. called me today and was like, hey do they ask you who should you make the first team and stuff? I was like, no. I think I think it's just their decision. Whoever writes the article or whatever, whatever. It, it, but I'm like, I mean, I feel like this should be a lot of people input into it. I don't know how the process works or whatever. But Kanye yeah. won't on the list at none. One, two, or three. First thing. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, you seen Kanye play for a long time. Well, let's start off like this. Mm-hmm. The reason why guys don't pick those guys because they're faithful to certain schools that's been successful. You know what I mean? I think you might see a couple schools have a kid that's first team all the time because the school has, has been good to them. Mm -hmm. But um, a, guy, a guy like Kanye, going back to the question you just asked, the man is, is shoulder loading and putting, you know, he's, he's putting his input imprint on what what's going over there and in the beach you got like another now it's another wave of, of a kid and he's just it's just gonna be an opportunity for princes and boys to be able to put their input on getting to the playoffs this year and getting some things cooking and look at what the kid has done he's successful enough to do that mm -hmm. and to not give him a nod is retarded yeah and See, get a man a nod right. and get a man a nod <laughs> yeah, that's and, and and and, and and his, I think his first couple of years, he's uh, he's winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's winning. His first couple of years, freshman sophomore year, he winning, ain't he? That's all I need to need you to do is win, baby, win. Like yeah, Al Davis used to say in the Raiders. Even like, when he yeah. was a freshman, I felt like yeah, he winning. It, 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 is, it is not winning some games. He's winning some good games. Mm -hmm. they, they won some stuff. You know what I mean? The coach has done a good job too, is putting them. In a, in a right situation. If it's a snub, you should speak about it, but it happens a lot, you know. I, they, make, they, they, they ain't in the beginning of them making bad decisions on who should get stuff on the first team. Yeah. But yeah, they've done a good job, him and a lot of those guys, you know. They, they, he, he's made his teammates better, you know. Kenyon Giles has shot the ball well this year, and they ain't getting, he shot the ball better than some seniors. Those two guys are getting overlooked. So what, what do you think? Why do you think they're getting overlooked? I feel like they wanted to give people Seniors, right. oh. their recognition before they left. 
Yeah, they got overlooked on this, both of them. Both of them. Giles, and Giles. Giles is, <laughs> yeah, Giles and Clary got overlooked. Giles and Ye got overlooked, man. Yeah. They, they, but they, it's crazy because I love their class, man. Their class is doing, is snapping right now. Let, let, <laughs> let, let the work, the work that's been put in, let it be compensated. Yes, their class is snapping. Man. But still, it's just that they, even that two year window has been yeah. pretty solid. They going crazy right I now. I get what you're saying. The wave of guys around the area. <laughs> Donald Man know. Jr. Yeah. Yeah. There's some <laughs> man. Yogi got a sophomore over in, in Lick Taylor that um if you don't get too much familiar with him, he's gonna be able to do some things that he can do what he do, you know. He can he can get it he can get it going at a competitive level. What's his name? Uh, uh, uh DJ Dawson. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He can he can he can put some something, something together. He's gonna only get better. The sky's gonna be the limit for the kid. You know, I see I, I, I see some of those things before they happen. Mm -hmm. See, once again, ain't nobody talking about what's going on, but when you turn around, wipe your eyes and wake up, boom, somebody then then then, then blossom on you. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they they're the next it. They're the next thing coming out. You know, so that's one thing I like to talk about this area. How, how you, well, what's some of the people that you've seen like was a, was about to blossom before they blossom. Like I know, I seen you on the uh, Matt documentary. You seen Matt? You was with the little Matt. program. Yep, and yep. That's, and we did the Matt. Seen he's and went crazy. Right, <laughs> Matt was coming around doing some stuff. Hey, going back to um, you know, God rest the deceased. AJ James. The AJ James is kind of like my. Um, he's more my. Sometimes you got that kid that you coach, but you also got that love for off the court. Mm -hmm. He he was the one because uh, he was doing loaded seven five seven. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, he was a sophomore. And he was playing up. Yeah. And he played seventeens. Yeah, I remember that. With with um, Jonathan Northfleet, mm -hmm. Joe Bryant, Darion Sebron. He was around those guys at all player of the years. Yeah, yeah. So he was playing with those guys, and I knew he was gonna be special. I used to have like comparison to, to Briante and stuff. Like, so I've grown close with him. He's kind of reserved, quiet. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't talk as much, but when I, when he played, and I seen how he played certain ways, we, we would sit down on the side on the sideline and talk. And once me and him clicked, we clicked. And then the next year, he just tried to bite everything and move. He just had like a he was like a lion with this big mange just taking over territory, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's why that buzzer beater and stuff came out. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just. <laughs> it, 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 the buzzer beater and he was just getting all the two hand flushes yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he came back to his school working hard you know the relationship was real real genuine he had good genuine relationships with a lot of people so his spirit was always that's, open that's a fact that's you know what I mean fact. the way he treated you the way he treated everybody like mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a, uh, uh, I'm gonna give you one story that don't nobody know about between me and this might make me and AJ James so special mm -hmm. one day um, he was just working at Mission Barbecue last summer mm -hmm. and, um, nobody knew about this I took, I used to take him to work sometimes. So when I'm at Bishop, or I got some friends I might go hang out with, I might go get me something to eat with a friend of mine or something like that. And I I told him a couple of times, look man, just take the car and go to work. <laughs> he, he had my car, driving my car to work. You know what I mean? He'd be bringing that drunk rat, <laughs> call me, bring it back. You know what I mean? We just had a relationship like that. You know what I mean? Like it was bigger than basketball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Huge loss, man. Huge nah, loss. Guys, man, you see, I had to go back to that, get back, because he slipped my mind again. I had to go back to talking about it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, I saw him when I knew he was the, I said he the one. You know, he get the steals up and down. And I liked him because he wanted to guard the best player on the court. He was tough. He picked you up full court. <laughs> Fact. You know what I mean? He just clawing at the ball, making you respect the fact that he gonna defend you to, to you pretty much die out. Mm -hmm. Like he's either like I'm gonna either make you surrender or you gonna let me do what I wanna do. That's the mentality he had. You know. Yeah. He's an epitome of like the season is in the 757 to be one of those type of players. Yeah, that was true. But all the young guys, all the guys that felt like they got overlooked, you know, I understand your frustrations. Let this really just you fire, just bro. man, you get you a list and just come back and you can get anybody that ever did anything wrong to the fact that they slept on your game. I need one of them damn you know, Leonard, you know the what I mean? Some of y'all guys, some of y'all guys <laughs> that got overlooked. The young guys don't really feel too much into it. It's a good thing. They keep you just knowing that you got something to prove to somebody. You know, it's a, it's, it's a sport like that. Basketball. 
Like you said, but like you said, everybody gets snubbed because you know uh, Cam <laughs> Thomas got snubbed. Yeah, get you on a McDonald's list. Yeah, see how you feel about that? At that level, they snub Cam. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, don't don't worry, don't worry about his personality or whatever's going on with him. Yeah. If you do what you do and well, you I'm make the court. you make the main thing the main thing, yeah. you know what I mean? When you come and say, I'm gonna bring this to the picnic table, I'm bringing all the groceries, and it's a good hefty piece, I'm like, yeah, you can eat with me anytime. If you're gonna score them 30, and it's guaranteed that's what you're giving out, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a place on somebody's roster, son. That's, That's how the coaches say it in their type of language. You're gonna have a place on somebody's roster. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. There's always a room at the dinner table for 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 a hunter. Well, it's crazy because he don't he don't make the list. Right. Next next game he has what 50 to 51. Like a couple 40 50s. <laughs> right. Right. That man, he's just a bucket. He's pure. He got that Kobe. And, and anybody that doesn't exactly mentality. anybody that doesn't feel there's some things that make you not want to appreciate. His focus, he worked hard at it. He never had it handed to him like people think. He took a lot of time out to really be able to hit these shots. So and he took to, a year off. Yeah, and we have to appreciate <laughs> that. We got to appreciate what he did leading the EYBL and scoring. Mm -hmm. This area, we got to appreciate that. We got, He's from our area. That's he, right. You know what I mean? He created, the man is Lewis Williams in AAU, man. If any of the young kids ever go to YouTube or watch Lou Will, and how crafty it is to score the ball. He does that at a high level. Man, he's going that's a high paying job. He scored every way now. Yeah, he, that's a high paying job. He can Euro left, floater, fall aways, long distance. Mm -hmm. You gotta give him you gotta give him credit. That's why I like like that's what Epps is doing, walking up and pulling up real deep. Mm -hmm. He's showing you the range. He know like he watched it coming watching Cam, you know, it's yeah. just I'm gonna give you another thing about how the seven five seven is so cemented on how we create our own way. Uh, 2020 been tough. A lot of people been down. Rest in peace to uh, Roger Mayweather. You know, mm -hmm. but this is a known fact. I know I got some specific family members that knows that Roger Mayweather says the reason why Floyd Mayweather has the style and skill is because they studied from Pernell Whitaker. Yeah. When Roger Mayweather lost to Pernell Whitaker, a Norfolk song 757 native, uh -huh. Roger Mayweather said whatever style it is, that's crafty. So he made sure that his little one, mm -hmm. Floyd, pick up on the defensive strategy of boxing. The 757 has origins on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got a lot of origins in sports. Mm -hmm. We had two number one picks, <laughs> and, and Allen Iverson and Joe Smith, and then we had back-to-back -back football and basketball with Michael Vick. Yeah. You know, so yeah, this is the cream of the crop, you know? So who, who's the best player that ever come out of the 75? Or some of the best players. Some of the best players. In your opinion, yeah. Ronald Curry is the is a staple of what winning is. Ronald Curry is probably a lot of people's favorite. Um, Allen Iverson can definitely be a favorite to some people. Um, you mentioned Bubba. Uh, John, you mentioned John, 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 John Gilchrist John is my favorite. Ba John Gilchrist <laughs> is my favorite basketball player because it's my era. And I was there when it when it when, <laughs> when it happened. happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's our era. I That's our era. You know what I mean? People, people don't want to. It's like it's like LeBron had the 2010s and stuff, and people in the Jordan fans say, "Oh, I don't want to give it back, take it back." No, it's not your era no more. This is LeBron's era, uh -huh. so that's why they got the LeBron fans and stuff. Cause I'm a LeBron fan, yeah, yeah. but I also knew when I was watching Jordan, it was special. It was special. Yeah, yeah. So that's how Gil Chris, he's my high school Jordan. Like, <laughs> like when I was coming up and it was the, the work ethic and the, and the uncanny the, the uncanny ability of John Gil Chris. Uh -huh. He was just, you know what I mean? And this is what John told me that AJ was going to be good like that. When I said, John, what you talking about AJ James? John said. I used to say I want to sign on the AJ James. John said, yeah, he's going to be good. You know what I mean? So just to get that blessing from Bubba, man. You know what I mean? Bubba was, like the Hall of Famers is playing now. Bubba was walking into their territory dominating. Uh -huh. You know, so... That's my hero, my buddy John. I love John, <laughs> you know, and and, and and had a lot of respect for Marquis Cook too, though, because he was yeah. the up and coming like in the era too, though, with John. He came a couple years after, but them were my guys, though, you know. Watching some of your teams play over, and when a lot of people would never understand now that, that they look back, Tallwood was a reckon uh, a team to be reckoned with. I know. That's, That's how the generation changed. The people, first Colonial was good. Yeah. Back then, Kellum was good, you know. And then Kellum had runs. Now hold on, they was making runs every time you turn around. So yeah. don't, you know, like when you get these different 
fields of teams coming up, you gotta respect like Maury has always been good and then they end up winning yeah. last year, you know, and, uh -huh. and doing some things that they had to do, you know, and we definitely took one from him because if we didn't beat if we didn't beat Maury that 2016 when they had Cam, yeah, uh, Cam Chancellor, they was trying they would have won a state championship. Yeah, they were trying to win <laughs> win titles yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And y'all was you know knocking guys off. Yeah, that was, that was tough. Uh, <clears throat> how you feel about a lot of kids transferring to different schools? Cause they always say like the AAU coaches got more of an influence. <laughs> <laughs> influence on it than uh than the public school. Uh, they be like the public school they just take the blessing, but it's more of a AU kind of influence uh, that got the kids transferring all over. How you feel about that? Some some from a from an honest <laughs> uh, honest standpoint, sometimes you could get a lot of decision making on what school you want to go to and stuff like that if you are dealing with some stuff AAU wise. Mm -hmm. Your personal trainer can get into somebody's head to do something. Any 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 indication from somebody, you always have to watch. But what in public school that you don't see a lot of coaches do in this area or private school, whatever it is, they should always try to have some type of phone call or some type of reason to reckon to be able to communicate business with your players anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, if you got, uh, you see like, you, like, okay, if you take a family member, your son, or your, you got a younger brother or sister, you're going to always be there to watch the games. So when you got a coach and a kid, I would always be there to watch most of my kids' games. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like a parent would do. Yeah. Us coaches, we got to understand this. And this is what we got to do for real. And I say this so we can get this on the segment. We got to still treat the kids like we are family to the kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We got to do that too. You know what I mean? If we If we're going to be able to coach them and get wins, we still got to treat them like that, that they're our family, you know. I, I wouldn't not make sure that I answer the phone or, or be able to spend some time with the kids outside of basketball. Like, just like the season's over, if some of those kids call me, let's get on the phone and figure out something. Let's get a, some type of conversation on, you know, what we need to do, whether somebody needs something or somebody needs something as far as basketball-wise, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, but transferring goes from a lot of stuff. Parents will really be mad at the coach. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna keep telling you that's what that, that's the deciding factor. You um, you got children, you know that yeah. a coach ain't gonna tell you, okay, your son your son real good at a high school and somebody says he should transfer here, what you think? The first thing you're gonna say is, okay, what's the reason being? Uh, I know basketball. Mm -hmm. I've been around the game enough. Let me see if it makes sense and then you make a decision there. If it makes sense you know, but um, if you're mad at your coach and you're killing, because this happened at the college level too. If you're killing and you're balling and you you putting up numbers or whatever you got to do, you're doing real well, and you transfer, it's got to be something going on with you. You just don't like him or he don't like you. Yeah. Now, that's what I always look at too. Now, if it's somebody that ain't done nothing on the team, oh, I see why you transferred. You probably want to get away from a situation and get some more, more yeah. looks. You know what I mean? But that's one of two things when it comes to that transferring to me. You know, what is the parents going to allow you to transfer for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're killing and you're doing well, why you transfer? Uh -huh. You know, and if you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. that, that's one thing about it. Like, <laughs> what's the, you know, what's the that, that real relationship in the marriage on should you transfer or not? You know what I mean? That's a fact. I mean, I feel like, I don't know, a lot of, that's why a lot of the schools now get in the academies so that, that they can have that get their sports up higher or mm -hmm. do better but it just got to be a good situation definitely a good situation um how you feel about this season of AAU right now it don't look like y'all about to have an AAU season how, how, how's that looking especially for the seniors like like ah, especially juniors becoming seniors that's unfortunate it's it's a sad situation if those kids aren't able to fulfill, you know, their junior summers to, to, to try to ready-made their tools and ready-made their mentality to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really trying to, you know, be college collegiate athletes and, you know, get some type of free money to get this education. So all, all those things are critical, and I would want those kids to have that opportunity. That's one thing I will always want. The opportunity to have a free ready-made scholarship, you know, for free, going to college for free, 
you know, and, um, families can, can change lives like that. Mm -hmm. Families can change, you know, generational situations like that. You know, these thousands and thousands of dollars of scholarships. So that's why, you know, man, it's a tough time right now. 2020 has been really tough. <laughs> that's a fact. It, feel, it, feel, it feels like, yeah, what, the first session uh, it was already canceled, right? And then... Yeah, because I, I haven't heard anything on April. Yeah. I haven't even heard anything on what's going on with April right now. You can't even supposedly practice as well either, right? You're not even, not even supposed to be in the gym or contact with each other, so... It's like I'm a certain person minimum to be in the gym and, and whatever it is. And some gyms aren't just open at all. Yeah. So um, it's really rare for anybody to have contact with each other, but... Um, there's no sports going on right now, so <laughs> we gotta live it through what you know our experiences. We gotta just keep rebuilding it, <laughs> like what we're doing right now. Do you suggest a kid just go old school and just go to the park by themselves? Yeah, and you work can be, out. <clears throat> you can still ready made. You can ready. You can ready made shopping your tools. Mm -hmm. You can get into the woodshed and bring all your tools out and shopping your tools. You know, cause you still got the hand eye coordination with dribbling and making a lot of decisions. You know what I mean? You're not wearing tear your body on, on the pavement, but you're still shopping your tools. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can go out on the, on, the, on the park and come up with a creative game or a creative situation. Mm -hmm. You know, we spend a lot of hours out there doing it. It's going to be a muscle memory related thing. Yeah. And we're going to be good. You know, you're still sharpening your tools. Mm -hmm. So you can get out there in the park and do some stuff. Dribbling the basketball and, and being out with the basketball doesn't hurt you at all. You know, the real love of the game is going to show for a lot of people right now. I know, I know, especially <laughs> especially from the juniors, it's definitely gonna see where they uh how much they let the game if they just gonna let not being in the gym with a trainer or the whole team downgrade their success. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, there's put putting in the work. It's gonna it's gonna always tell who you are when you step on the court. Putting in that work. Um, you say something about the new generation of social media. How do you think this is a our, like what we do, like what I do, what Slam, everybody do for the mm -hmm. social media for, for the 7 by 7 basketball community. How do you think, do you think it's helping the kids or making them want to just be popular? Because that, that's always like a big thing with me. Like I, like I get a kid that'd be like, hey, yo, you got that layup I made. Like why do you want just a layup? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you know you lost by 20, right? Like yeah, you that, brought that, the situation that, up. You, be that, that, you brought that up a couple of times. That it bothers me, like bro, like they mind not even in the game. It feels like to me. See, I how, coach, you, how you feel about it? I coached this year at a private school, uh -huh. Catholic high school, uh -huh. formerly Bishop Sullivan. They changed the name. We had no idea. Nobody was gonna invite us to any um, showcases or nothing. No, like nobody really said anything about us, and we just got in the gym. And was able to turn some of the players from being 16, 15 point scores to 21, 22 point scores just because we had like us against the world mentality. If you don't worry about those things, you actually can get better. Mm -hmm. But if you start to let those things deter you, you become Hollywood or, or anything, and it starts to slow you down, and you start creating this image on you want to just play for the camera instead of playing the game. Mm -hmm. You know, you change your focus of the game, playing for the camera. If you just play the game, and you put it out there like you're in the backyard and it's for bragging rights against one of your older cousins or your older brothers and you get knocked on the dirt. You take it serious then, so you gotta take it serious. You know, you gotta take it like it's it's it's, it's some respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. Not 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 to try to make make anybody else like it, you know, play it play it cause you love it. Play it cause you wanna do it. You wanna go against somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so those social media guys, it comes back to get you. You know, some guys Go to college, then don't then they don't pan out being social media guys. Yeah, you remember Seven Woods? Uh, mm -hmm. He went to uh, North Carolina, and um, he had all the clicks and stuff on YouTube. And then when it was time to really be that guy in the ACC, it was hard to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. you know, mentally <laughs> wasn't there. Matt McClung has, hasn't really fell victim to that because he was self-made. Yeah, yeah. He started creating himself each he and every uh, each and every summer. Each and every, and from from a, from a twelve calendar year mm -hmm. to the next year, he's putting something down in his pocket to be able to bring it back out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look at you. That's how you. That's how you looked at by most people. The rankings and and all these things and these people saying you are you you this and these these likes and all these clicks you get on these these videos. It's winning time. It tell you you know what are you gonna do? You know, 
It's a it's a big. So do you, so do you think it helps the kids? Do you think it's necessary now? Now now that second part of that question is it necessary? <laughs> is it necessary? It helps you. Mm -hmm. It helps you if you're doing well and um, it gets some people to see you. You know, and you stay the course and you can handle it. It's gonna help you. It's gonna be a great deal of success. A lot of number one players in the country get a lot of clicks and stuff, and they still do well. Yeah. You know, and um, it, it it puts a better you know decorations on, on what you got going on because everybody's tuning in to social media. Yeah. So being social media friendly and being a good player can help you. You know, it's just that generation we gotta accept. We gotta you know we gotta deal with that. It's a new generation. That's a fact. YouTube that just came out a couple years into like high school with me. Uh, same with me. Yeah, same it. with me. Well, it was like 2004 it came out, right? Yeah. 2004, yeah. like I think YouTube started, and then because I started getting the game footage from my uh, coach, but the process was so much longer. Like yeah. he's recording and he's putting it on tapes, VHS tapes. <laughs> so now I gotta find a way to get this VHS tape. To the computer, so I had to buy a DVD burner, watch the whole tape while it's burning to a DVD. That was like two hours. Yep. Now I gotta get this DVD, put it on the computer, and then burn it to the computer, and then I gotta edit it. So it was like a three day process just to get the VHS on the computer. You know what I'm saying? Now it's you get a dump. I might not even watch the game no more. Like people, literally, if you get a crazy dump on somebody, They'll leave or pull out their computer, post that dump, and then start recording again. Yep, because true. you want to be first also for the clips. Yep. But I don't, I don't be worried about that. I just try to put on for the 75 as much as possible. And you, and you, <laughs> and you, and you, the, and you pretty much like the, the heartbeat, the heartbeat and the major organs of the body of this thing. That's why I, I come on these, these you know, podcasts and I'm just going to you know, continue to work and have success with you. You know, and um, that's what's gonna make a lot of these things go. It's time to really give like real information and how people really feel from a, a, a standpoint on what they want to say and kind of what they want people to experience like all over. Like this is how I really feel about it. This is how some of the other coaches and some of the other basketball, you know, bystanders and, and basketball hierarchies talk, talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Why did this person get this? Or, you know, we just speak about it gradually. I understand that there's always going to be a, a, a coming or a great story to whatever negativity you had in sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to make a way. Don't worry about it. A lot of AAU coaches and different brands still, like, yeah, conflict with each other. But when I see them at the high school games, it seems like they're all cool. But over social media, it seems always seem like they got a problem with each other. The AAU programs are going scratch and claw and, 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 and grab at whatever the possibilities they can get out of a player. You know, they're going to make it competitive. They're going to try to get kids because they want to win games and they want to get the best kids. Um, if the adults can't leave it on the court or they don't find themselves leaving it on the court, it'll show. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't mind seeing all of them have success because I'm for representing the state and representing the areas. Yeah. All the area codes when it comes to VA and playing against different players across the country. Even if I'm not with your program, I still want you to do well because I bet you I can be within 100 miles or 40 miles of knowing that player being around his family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If he's a Virginia kid. so And when I run into you and it comes to basketball standpoints, I want you to do well. So the coaches... If they don't leave it on the court, you're going you to be able to weed the ones out. They're going to expose themselves on who they is to keep beefing with each other or whatever, <laughs> if, it's, if it's happening. Because yeah, yeah. I, I came in, this this year been pretty quiet and clear for me. I've been, man, I've just been relaxing, you know, going through all some of this trial and trauma, you know, that's been happening. But the grown-ups shouldn't impact. They should be, be trying to grow the game and continue to prosper the game. Is there a formula of getting a kid or – because I – I mean, you see a lot of the Boo Williams kids. I mean, mm -hmm. Boo Williams kids, you know, you see a lot of the Boo Williams coaches at their games. Uh -huh. it, it, does that help, like, going to their games, like, always showing love? Like, it, puts a, it, puts a it puts a comfortable puts a comfortable, comfortable mind state for the kid to be able to see you, mm -hmm. get comfortable with you. And then if you're playing some good competition, it, 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 it wages in the kid's head and it wages in the parent's head. 
Um, and also um, possibilities on what the kid can do too. You know, I, I don't know how every meeting goes because I don't want to be in every meeting, but it's going to be some point on how the kid wants to be used or how the kid wants to be treated mm -hmm. on those two aspects and get a kid, you know. And then, then you got your luxury of some kids get stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> more certain ones, you know, t shirts, anything could be involved for what you need to get a player, you know, and it's not nothing, to, nothing crazy, know, crazy, yeah, nothing yeah, to get yeah. no trouble, but yeah. you know, phone calls or something if somebody that the way they treat you and what you know, what they say they're gonna use you like and how they're gonna, you know, be for your family, they'll talk to you a certain way when you know they want you. Mm. What What's your role as like as you started doing AAU? Because I know. Like just being with you in some AU events, you're right. not always like the head coach. Right. You right. more like kind of play the back role, but right. you're always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I have a, a passion to coach when I need to. You know, like I can, I can spend six or seven months coaching for my my for my, with my private school coach and really enjoying those kids and not even probably top AAU kids, right? Mm -hmm. And then I get around AAU. And then I can kind of like try to help every aspect on what you need when you're not doing the things on the court. You know, you got to be in tune with you know getting your certifications and stuff and being NCAA certified and being able to get to your your local team camps so those colleges can see you. Your introductory to your next jobs. You want to shake hands with these coaches and work out for them and stuff. Even if you got to go four hours to North Carolina A and T, or you maybe get to go to East Carolina and work out. You go to these elite camps, and these kids need to hear it. Their parents need to hear it. So. You know, being an AAU advisor and, you know, a basketball operations guy, that's what you pretty much title it as. You know, you had those at college. I think some of the guys we know are basketball operations guys at ODU and stuff like that, you know. So that's what you do. You operate different avenues for these kids to have success off the court, you know. What do you see for the 757 kids in the future? Um, these young guys I'm watching now, they're going to go to certain places and they need to just – stick with it and try to make the most out of it. You know, what if you, what if I was to tell you out of some of the young kids that we see today, some of them might get their best offer from a military school, mm -hmm. but it's a division one school. And are you able to take that and grasp that and use that and um, squeeze all the juice out of it and be successful with it? Take care of your family, get a degree, mm -hmm. you know, be able to um, buy some things that you want once you graduate, get a good job, you know, and still play some overseas ball and make some good money to be able to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and um, create a lot for your family. So um, that might be the best school. Don't always look for what you see on TV, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So some of these young guys need to be prepared for that, you know, but I think they should be able to handle it. But once again, coaches have to be like family members to these guys too, to push them in that direction and, and guide them to what's going to be best for them and their family. You know, you don't want, nobody wants to lose out on something for trying to make a selfish decision. So we just try to just be non-selfish with everything. True. If we can. What, like when a kid leaves high school, I'm not really familiar with it. I know a lot of the viewers ain't. Like what, when a kid goes to like prep school, how does that work? You know how that work? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know a good, a good grasp on the format. <clears throat> you can go to a prep school and have two classes to work on, just strengthen your mindset, mindset up to being able to pass this class or this test so when it's time for to get qualified mm -hmm. or um, it's time to be able to take that test again and, and be NCAA qualified, the prep you. school helps you. you. you know, you. And you're going to be playing with some older people and you're going to be probably staying in a dorm and living a little older, a little bit more responsible. Mm -hmm. So with that, with that happening, it'll work itself out to see if you really want it, you know, if you go the prep route. So you know, do you, you're prepping a year to get ready for that college level that's going to be even more mature. It doesn't to take away from a college year though, right? You still have four years of college eligibility. Okay. So what would you would rather a kid do? Uh, get held back, like reclass, um, or take the prep route? Or can they do both? Um, <laughs> I probably think it's a possibility where you probably can. I haven't really heard too many cases of it. Uh -huh. um, if you reclass, you might be injured young or yeah. educational standpoint, an educational decision, you might want to do it. Um, you just got to really make sure you make a good final decision and the good people in your corner if you do it. Mm -hmm. It works out for certain people and some people look, might do a prep and it works out for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Definitely um, right out of C, bro. 
Yeah, yeah. So you know, do a prep year, and then you just say, you know what? I'm ready for this level. I, yeah. I came out and showed you, and the kid takes that opportunity and he embraces it and, and uses it. You know, you know, and um, I don't really like to knock anybody on their story. If it's if you're a four year guy, five year guy, mm -hmm. it don't matter to me because if it's some young kids from the from from Southampton Rose, the seven five seven, is trying to get the educational standpoints after high school, try it, mm -hmm. you know, do it, you know, but people are going to complain, you're going to hear the flack about it, but you do what you do because you trust yourself and trust your instincts to do it. Yeah. And you'll get something out of it. They do it for quarterbacks. Yeah. A quarterback can go to Virginia Tech and, and still spend five years at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I red shirted. Yeah, yeah. And I got four more years. I feel like the basketball world is more critical. They, yeah, they do. The basketball world is <laughs> more critical. They, they just want to understand it. And then when they don't understand it, it doesn't really cater or something to them. Or they don't have a lot of history with some people around them doing it. They just want to, you know, kind of shun their opinion up on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just to do what they do. Um, if you play with older kids in the playground, yeah, and, you and, your, and your high school team goes against some 19 year olds, like I was saying, and like we were talking about, I bet you when we go to the inner cities and the other other states, they already playing older kids already. Mm -hmm. Don't you know? thank you at all. Yeah, when you step out there and you and you and when you're in Harlem and you step on a basketball court, see, I've been in in New York City when I go visit my aunt as a 13 year old kid, and going down to Queens and going down in, in, in Manhattan, and the, and the, and the course was real loud and aggressive, and they had a lot of kids on them. It didn't matter the age. Yeah. It didn't. The, the age wasn't going to dictate anything. So you should take that back to your basketball situation and be ready to do that. Everybody's not going to be at the same level, but still, if you know, you've seen an older kid play, you played against some older kids, you'll be fine. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I know you deal with a lot of high school kids. I don't know if you well, deal with uh, younger kids, like in middle school. But what do you think about Jamal, Jamal Brown? I know he, he's uh, do, getting do, a lot of success in the media world, doing his thing in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> do, does he look like... Does he look like he's going to be able to do that when he gets 16, 17, 18? To me, if you want this question right now answered, yes. <laughs> and it's, I say yes too because I feel like when I met him, his skill set won't like it is now. So he's he, progressed so much. He's going to do it again. <laughs> he's going to do it again and again and again. Uh -huh. You know, now you water the plants to see how far it grows. You start putting the right resources around it. You making sure that it's just, just a sharp focus on getting the job done. You know what the job is. You're doing something on the court every other day. You can still maximize how you want to use your body, but you're on the court every other day trying to figure out what's the best situation to be successful playing this basketball game. In your opinion, I know he really wants to go to Norcom because he really looks up to Finney Smith mm -hmm. and um, the ticket, big ticket. Um, should he go to Norcom? In your opinion, should he do a year at Norcom or should he just get out of here? He's gonna play. He's gonna be able to play it for his hometown probably. Uh huh. And I don't see anything against it. Uh huh. Um, he's gonna get. He's gonna get some things that he needs verbally from the program and 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 that staff and the coaches there. Like I know the coach is gonna be there. He'll get something out of it. Uh huh. You know, cause it's still. It's still a time and a place to be, you know, to conduct yourself like an adult. So uh, after you get from a middle school standpoint, you no longer can think like middle school anymore. I know, and I feel like he's getting so much success. He's he's kind of like forced to grow fast, you know, so, faster than what he should. So his growth, saying? his growth over there would be all right, mm -hmm. and be very, it'll be very wholesome and health helpful to go there. To yeah. me, if you want my opinion, it'll be for his growth. You know, um, some things are for you to just be picking up and leaving the state if, uh, you know, you've never done it before. So, mm -hmm. um, no, he'll, he'll be fine. He, he's going to be, he's going to be a paperclip guy. You know, you, you're going to see the writings and you're going to see, get, get all your, your write-ups and stuff ready because he's one of them. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Another one, of them, another one of them ingredients you put in that pot in the 757, you stir it up, you're going to get something out of it. You know, so um, yes, the middle school hype and whatever you see on <laughs> is real. <laughs> went to a couple of his games. I'm going to check it out. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys over at Slam, you know, a lot of my good friends over at Slam that, you know, do a good job of filming. They over there doing some stuff. 
looking at the kid and it's a reason to be doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a reason, you know. Mm -hmm. Opportunity and things like that open up. You know, people want to see, you know, you showcase your talent. See how tenacious he is. Yeah, and I love what Slam brought you say that. I love what Slam did for AJ last year because it definitely got him a lot of yeah, had a big, big, uh, bigger. I would say format for for him to express his talent. You know what I mean? That just, it's big. That it's, just dope. it's a big opportunity for us to just keep being big on helping the seven five seven kids. It's a big opportunity. I want to do a lot of things for. The Ashley James name in, 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 in the upcoming future. I want I want you to be involved. I want I, anybody. If his yeah. parent, if his if his parents is cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, like we can kind of like get some stuff together and kind of do something for the family name every year. You know, to play some type of. I would love to do the All Star game and just have it. That's on his name. name. That's on yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Right, like, right, right. We can come up with a lot of different ways. And all these guys in this area that came up with him, we need to do that. You know, everybody that had a piece of him from his his, his dealings in. From Virginia Beach to AAU mm -hmm. to this school, his family being at that school, you know, having ties with him, you know, that's just all kind of, you know, unified. And like you said, some of the guys that make all all tie water and all state, they need to battle it out at the end of the summer and have some type of like if you do a two day all star practice, mm -hmm. you can make it competitive. Cause you know how to say the all star game sometimes is all just running and dunking. Yeah. If you do two days of practice, and you get 12 guys and, and somebody else get 12 guys and it's like a junior senior all-star game every year mm -hmm. and they work on some concepts you can get some matchups on who you know what i mean who can go at who yeah you, know? I feel, I you feel can like you can do that they don't do it out here i feel like it's a definitely and i feel like this year i was talking about doing it because you know i watched these kids since they was freshmen yeah. now they're seniors they about to leave so i really wanted to do it this year but with all the coronavirus thing that happened couldn't get it done but next year we gonna we gonna definitely do something. And I'm and I'm definitely all and I'm all aboard for this.